Hi guys, welcome back to GP Reactions. I hope you're well, hope you're having a great day. And as always, thanks to everybody that has subscribed. So I'm now going to be reacting to a song by Sting and this song dates back to 1985, although it was released over the end of 1985 and during the early weeks of 1986, it peaked at number 12 in the UK top 40. So the song in question is Russians. It's taken from the album uh, The Dream of a Blue Turtle, uh, which was released in December 85 as well. And uh, I believe it is a live performance. Obviously, with a title like Russians, it's 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 quite I suppose it's quite apt at the moment. And I had planned to do this song anyway. Um, I do vaguely remember it from the very beginning of '86. It wasn't a commercially massively successful record, and it wasn't around for very long. It didn't get that much airplay and I think it was at a time when uh, 80 between about 80 and 84 uh, a lot of people were frightened about uh, the idea of nuclear conflict I think by 86 and um, that was beginning to fall a little but having said that it was still quite uh, relevant at that time so um, Without further ado, I'm really looking forward to checking out this live version and um, yeah, and, and I guess absorbing the lyrics. Um, if they are anything like what I remember, they're quite dark, um, soul searching, uh, quite hitting. So yeah, without further ado, this is uh, Steve. <laughs> Is, um, it's called I Hope the Russians Love Their Children Too. it there and the really interesting thing about the lyrics is I hope the Russians love their children too and I guess this was written at a time when I think Russia was still very closed off from the rest of the world uh, I don't think it was till the late 80s that they actually opened up a bit and so this was written at a time when maybe we didn't see Russia as with men, women, children, who basically were the same as us and they do the same things we do. Um, but we weren't actually viewing the Russians in this way at this time. I think, um, you know, the propaganda always focuses on the, the devilry of uh, individuals rather than uh, the collective, the beauty of a collective and um, and when I say the beauty of a collective, I mean, 
a lot of times it's it's one person is is representative um, of everybody and everybody is representative of that one person. What I'm trying to say is we, we forgot that we were dealing with a giant country or giant union of human beings and we rather focused on the militaristic aspect of a certain small group of individuals. Um, and yeah, so when Sting sings about this, that the um, if Russians love their children too, um, clearly nowadays we have the internet. We've we've we kind of came out of that Cold War period for a bit. We we see um, Russians every day. They're in sports. They're um, it, it's it's we have you know there's Russian actors. There's there's a whole kind of crossover now. People aren't uh, closeted, if you like, behind this iron curtain. Uh, so we know now that you know Russian children aren't are real, and um, you know that the people of Russia probably um, aren't the same as their leaders. And I think that's the same to be said about many different countries throughout the world. Um, but yeah, this is still very, very thought provoking song, even after all this time. that was Sting, that was Russians, and that was live in 1985, and um, I've forgotten why, how simpli simplistically effective this song was. Um, it almost kind of felt like it was an acoustic set, really, but um, I think there was some percussion probably going on. Um, I like his guitar work as well, by the way. I really like him when he just plays his guitar. It's really... I think I've heard that before on a lot of other different tracks and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just, that's really, really good. And with his voice as well, so effective, but um, yeah, I mean, the feeling I got from this song as well is that, first of all, there was like the, I think there was a, a in the, if I remember from the actual song, there was like a clock ticking and that pace is kind of slowly kept throughout this. Just reminding us that um, when we engage in uh, negative rhetoric, that there is like a a a clock that's almost counting down to uh, a regrettable um, action, possibly by by uh, one side or another, um, and leading to um, mutually assured destruction. I guess, uh, and this has has this has 
happened nearly uh, a couple of times. Uh, we've nearly had situations where Russians thought that the Americans were launching missiles at them. And if it hadn't been for uh, a young um, commander stalling um, his response to his um, to his seniors, his his um, his commanders, his commanders or generals, then uh, we could have easily been into a world war. And <clears throat> I think that was nineteen eighty three that happened. So, so it, it's not always by design that these things will happen. They could happen um, accidentally, and once somebody thinks somebody's firing on them, they'll fire back. And of course, then that other person doesn't know, they'll fire then. And, uh, and before you know it, we're, we're living in a nuclear wasteland. If we're lucky enough to survive, we'll probably die of radiation poisoning. If we're lucky enough to survive radiation poisoning, we'll probably die of starvation. Um, and if we're lucky enough to survive any of that, then, um, yeah, we will probably be very short in supply of humans across the planet. So it's, it is a, um, it's, it's just a mad, mad, I mean, that, that is the acronym, uh, mutually assured destruction is, is mad in, in its, in its essence. And I think, um, that the, um, that somebody would create a, a bomb as such to to create such destruction in the first place. And I think it was um, Oppenheimer that um, uh, created the, the atomic bomb and obviously it was um, it was used on Nagasaki and um, Hiroshima to um, horribly devastating effects. And you would have thought we would have learnt something about not having these weapons. Uh, you know, radiation doesn't stop at borders. It it goes, it's, I mean, even the Chernobyl disaster affected people in the UK. There were a rise in cases of leukemia. Um, there was a direct correlation between the two things. Uh, and if you think about the number of, um, you know, bombs that would be let off, even if you let off, like, I don't know, let's just pluck a number. If you, even if you launched, 10 nuclear missiles and then decide to stop. That would probably be enough to poison the atmosphere for many, many other countries, even continents. I don't think you're safe in Australia. I don't think you're safe in Africa or South America. Um, yeah, this shit will get you. And it's just really irritating to think that we live in an age where the paranoia is so high between, um, between leaders that they they keep these bombs. I don't know what could happen to even change that. Um, uh, and there's a line in this where it says, um, Mr. Reagan says, we will protect you. Um, we know that's not gonna happen. Not in a month of Sundays would any leader protect their citizens. Um, to start off, protect them against what? I mean, and uh, uh, what kind of, the more citizens you you protect, let's say, they created a bunker for one million people. Um, what happens when those one million people get out of that bunker? Um, there's nothing there for them. There's no food. So if, uh, if any leaders wanted to create a nuclear war in order to depopulate the planet, then um, obviously they... I mean, let, let's just rewind that. If any leaders wanted to create a war, um, they wouldn't protect their people because anything that's left would be in short supply. So it's better to have a few people left in a bunker with plentiful supplies for five years or something, which isn't even enough to, 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 uh, to bypass the radiation. Um, so yeah, there is no, there would be no, this is what worries me about, um, you know, I suppose Vladimir Putin's got his, his family in a, a nuclear bunker. He's probably in a nuclear bunker as well. And it worries me that he doesn't actually care about his people. I, I, I got a feeling that the US, maybe they don't care about their people. 
it's there is a real disconnect between leaders and their citizens or you know subjects if they're royalty um and yeah this is just this is just you know uh crazy really and i think that is we're going back to 1985 86 when uh sting was singing about this um i don't think we got to the point yet where there's a growing feeling of hysteria in europe and america um at the moment europe is on the sidelines and america is it's like they're set way off and so i don't think there is like that feeling of hysteria but there's a lot of concern over how how russia is conducting itself and um and then we need to maybe look at why and i'm sorry to go off the because i mean this is a reaction channel for music but um one thing that really kind of irritates me at the moment is that I've not seen um, any any reactors, any of the big reactors, mostly in the US. I've not really seen them talking about this, whether they whether they're trying to avoid um, a a whether they're trying to avoid issues with comments and stuff because comments can land a channel in uh can land, land a channel into trouble um if there's a lot of dissension but i think that you know you can have a reasonable uh discussion about a video on your channel about um what you think are the rights and wrongs in the world and how you feel that um you know but basically about ukraine russia thing i think there is room to have a reasonable uh, discussion uh, over record about this and obviously I think it's wrong that the Russians have invaded. Um, I think whatever historical um, gripes they have over Crimea and you know even over Ukraine I think the first thing they should have been doing is sitting down and you know uh, talking about this and trying to uh, come to solutions um, because as soon as they invade it becomes um, a completely different issue it's almost like they don't have the ability to sit down and discuss stuff and I know that sometimes discussions don't get countries very very far but um, you know clearly once they invade a country like Ukraine Ukrainians have you know their rights to defend themselves and uh, and at the moment I feel sort of slightly nervous but reassured that nobody else is getting involved um, from uh, the EU or NATO and you know I'm hoping that the whole situation will resolve at some point because uh, I honestly feel that I think oh god it's, it's going to make me sound like really daft but I just want you know to be a bit more peace in the world we seem to um you know we seem to I mean just just recently we were drawn from Afghanistan and um you know then there's the whole Syria thing and it just seems to be like one war after another and it doesn't really seem to have much purpose to be honest uh, and this just seems like another thing I mean if the Russians really hold Kiev to their hearts then um, surely the, they won't destroy Kiev because you know that's an historically a very very old city and uh, so they'd be destroying their history in order to it just make the whole thing makes no sense uh, I won't really kind of go into the lyrics I think they're really self-explanatory um, interestingly I'm just reading that um, Sting came up with the idea after he tapped into um, a Russian Russian TV via via a stolen satellite or something like that stolen satellite signal and he was watching um, a very sort of um, well put together children's television programming which was and he and that's when he kind of suddenly dawned on him that you know the Russians 
love their children too and why would anybody want to be an aggressor with nuclear missiles when um, you know you just go look out your window and you probably see children playing um, women children um, culture and stuff like that so it must have uh, it must have kind of awakened the idea of 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 uh, pursuing this idea that there there really is uh, something worth um, not fighting for in the world and that is the destruction of everyone you love your cities your culture um civilization as we know it's so uh, um i can't really think of anything else to say about this song i as i said i found it very effective it was very moody very slow at times it was kind of there was a chilling instrumental bit which i remember more so from the original studio version oh it felt very cold very isolated um very in in some ways kind of very rural um but yeah it, it kind of felt like it was uh, uh separate from reality but nevertheless it was it was almost counting down to a very cold reality of what the individuals would be doing next um so yeah um yeah, there's nothing more I can really add to this. Um, I'm glad to be back. I hope you enjoyed this live version. He's, Sting's got a fantastic voice. And uh, yeah, please leave some comments. Please be respectful in your comments. I, um, I don't really want this song to spark arguments as such. Um, this isn't a political channel. This is about... Uh, songs and music and obviously a lot of songs have a place in history in um, the social makeup of of um, of history as well and you know it always will uh, create debates I don't shy away from reacting to songs like these um, whether it's about Russia whether it's about South America America uh, Northern Ireland. Um, I think if a song is is one that's good and it's memorable and it has meaning, then uh, it's worth uh, it's worth reacting to and talking about. But at the same time, if if my comment section descends into uh, mass arguments, then YouTube do look at these things and they will uh, maybe sanction my channel or they will re remove comments. Uh, without me removing the comments and uh, and they may uh, withdraw my withdraw my channel completely if they think um, that it's uh, descending into uh, disrepute, disrepute um, which isn't my intention whatsoever so anyway guys you know what take care of yourselves hope to speak to you soon and uh, and really this is the first reaction of my day and I'll be doing uh, a number of others before I call it quits.